In this video, I'm going to show the plotting of time series data in the statistical software R. In a previous video, I went through the data retrieval library to extract data or retrieve data from the USGS or the US Geological Survey website for the James River at Galena. In that video, I, I used the site number, parameter code, start date, and end date. And then I read the data, and this DV stands for daily value, using those parameters. By the way, the parameter code 00060 is for uh, the flow data, daily flow data. And I assign that to this variable, daily Galena flow. And then to ensure that I actually did retrieve the data and to be able to look at the data, I then used the library ggplot2. And then using this command, I then plotted the data. And then this is the plot that you see. So what I'm going to show in this video is how to clean this plot up. This plot is OK, and it does allow you to see that we were able to retrieve the data, but it can be cleaned up to look a little bit better. So one of the first things that I want to show is right now we have this geom line, which means that we're doing this uh, as a line plot. But if we have daily average values, then it might be more appropriate to use step values. So we're going to change that to step. And then we're going to run it again. And you can see that it does make a slight change to the plot. So instead of connecting each one of the dots, it now uh, makes it more in a step or a, like a blocky type look to it, um, which is, again, is probably more appropriate for daily values. So we have a couple more improvements that we'll make. And I have the, the code commented out. We're going to look at these one at a time. So right now you can see over here we have uh, 20,000, 40,000. So we actually do have the values on the y-axis. But in this case, we're going to change it to where it goes from 0 to 60,000 by using this sequence, 0 to 60,000. And we want it to be by 10,000. And we do this by using the scale y continuous command. So we're going to uncomment this. I remember that we need to put this plus sign in. And then I'm going to take this plus sign out for right now. And then we'll save it and then rerun it. And you can see that I'll move this over a little bit. We can see that it did change the, the y axis. So it did change it to where now we do have uh, values at every 10,000. So for the next, we want to change the, the labels. And what we want to do is to make the X label a month. Remember, we've got to put our plus sign here. And also, I'm going to change the scale. So I'm going to do these next two commands together. We're going to do the scale on the X. So we do X lab to change the label on the x-axis. And then we're going to play around with the scale on the x state and um, all on the x scale. And we have the, the breaks at every one month. We have minor breaks at every one month. And then we have uh, our labels are going to be in date format. And when we have this percent with the lowercase b, we're doing that because we want it to be abbreviated. So rather than spelling out the entire month, we just use the, the three-letter abbreviation for it. And then we'll take out this plus sign for right now. And then we'll save it. And then we're going to rerun it. And we'll, again, I'll move this over. And you can see now that we do have the, well, we have month as our label on the x-axis. And then we also have uh, these abbreviated month labels that are showing. One of the reasons why I put in the, the minor, 
I put in the, the minor interval or the minor break of one month is because if I did, in fact, I'm going to take this out temporarily. And then we'll save it and then rerun it. And you can see, I won't move it over this time, but it, you can see that it puts in this extra line because it's not giving me the minor break that I want. And it doesn't look quite right, so that's why I chose to put in that minor break. So in this case, I'll go ahead and add that back in. And once we do that, we can use a comma after that. And then we can save it. And if I rerun it, I should be able to now just have the, the uh, vertical grid lines at each month, which is what we wanted. So now the we want to add our title. So we want to add a title because right now this plot doesn't have a title. So we want to add a, a title to this. And also we want to put in, we're going to change the X label and also change the Y label. Right now we have this Y label. Um, so we're going to change that to flow CFS. So remember to add your plus sign, but since the next uh, line of code is still commented out, I need to take that plus sign out for right now. So we're going to save it. And then this should add a title, change our x-axis label, and also change the y-axis label. And here you can see it did put in, I'll move this over. So it did put in a title, James River at Galena Flow Data. It did add in the y-axis label, and it changed the x-axis label to, to date. One issue that I'm seeing right here is that we do have the uh, the title, it's left justified right now. And so if you wanted to change that, you can use this theme command. Move it over. So the theme for the plot title, right now we can change the, the color to blue. That's pretty obvious. And then you have this H just, and it's just horizontal justification. So right now it's defaulting to being left justified. But if you put H just equals 0 0.5, then it would uh, center it. And if you do H just equals 1, then it would be right justified. So I think we're okay here. So I'm going to save that and then run it. And then I'll move this over. And you can see that it does change the title to blue and then centers it. So hopefully this helps you to understand a little bit better about how to format your plots for time series data in R. If you found the video helpful, please subscribe to the channel and you'll get notifications when other videos come out. And thanks for watching this one.